Core Keeper is an early access game that showed up on my Steam feed that immediately caught my attention. The description says that you'll need to mine resources, discover an ancient world with terrifying bosses, craft items and equipment, and farm crops. This looks like a combination of all my favorite indie games in the past 10 years. To top it off, there's also a multiplayer for up to 8 players. With Steam reviews currently sitting at a very positive rating and a price less than a movie ticket and popcorns, what have I got to lose? This was very much an impulse buy and I didn't really know anything about the game before buying it. So let's just go ahead and jump right in and start playing. There's not really much of a story or a setup. You're basically an adventurer and you're dropped off in a cave and left to figure things out on your own. One thing that's neat is during your character creation, you can pick a background. There's a handful to pick from here, like soldier, farmer, fisherman, etc. I went with the miner, so I started with a copper pickaxe. And from there, well, I was plopped down in a cave and let loose. I'm so used to being spoon-fed how to play games nowadays that it's just quite refreshing to see something uh, just kind of drop you in, just let you experiment and figure out what needs to be done. There isn't a single tutorial or pop-up window. After figuring out how to craft torches and investigating these uh, intimidating statues around me, I switched from controller to mouse and keyboard and I started digging. So there I am, digging along in the latest and greatest indie game. Not a care in the world. Found a few pieces of copper, some items and plants, and then the screen shakes, and there's a loud boom. Uh, what? What was that? I feel like I'm in Jurassic Park and I'm watching a glass of water shake. You know what was causing the screen to shake? It was this guy, right here. This abominable slime ball named Glurch the Abominous Mass. I got a little too close and he started attacking, scared the hell out of me, so I just ran away. And that's how the first five minutes of Core Keeper went for me. To be honest, I loved every second of it. We'll get our revenge on Glurch later. Turns out that creature is a boss that corresponds to one of the statues near the spawn point. So now it's starting to come together. I need to defeat the monsters that these statues represent, and to do that I need to get much better gear and start up a little base of operations here. This is where the game actually kicks off. To be successful at Core Keeper, you need to navigate this huge underground world and find ore and minerals to craft equipment. It's not hard to find the minerals because they shine in the darkness. It's a lot more convenient than placing torches everywhere and looking for different colored rocks. Looking at you, Terraria. Once you craft a few of the crafting stations, like the workbench, the anvil, the smelter, and the cooking pot, yeah, there's a lot of them, you can turn the materials you find out in the world into useful items. In fact, here's a pro tip. Make sure you craft the lantern as soon as you can. You can craft it from the tool bench, just make sure you have four copper bars and five slime on you. Don't be like me and run around placing torches every five feet for the first 30 minutes. Make the lantern. Scattered throughout the caves are seeds and plants that you can plant, grow, and then cook. The farming and cooking is not super in-depth or anything, but it's easy to understand and oh so beneficial. Literally all you do here is you hoe the ground, you plant the seeds, you water them once, and that's it. The plants grow over time and you just whack them with the tool to harvest them. You can then take those food items and put them into the cooking pot to give yourself buff items. The first couple recipes I found felt super OP, like if you combine the bomb berry with a heart fruit you get a jelly dessert that increases your life by 25 points for 5 minutes, as well as health regen. If you combine the bomb berry with a mushroom, you get a burrito that increases your run speed by 25% for a minute. This is super useful during the glurch fight because of all the slime on the ground that slows your run speed. It really encourages experimentation, but it's also really easy because there's only two ingredients to worry about. After I gathered some copper armor, I tried to fight Glurch again. I had plenty of food, with good buffs, a full set of copper armor, a sword. I thought I was ready. Okay, new game plan. The main thing that kind of messes me up is the slime on the floor. I came back with a shovel and I tried to shovel out the slime on the floor to make a clean arena for fighting Glurch. This is a decent idea, right? Well, yeah, and it helped, but it doesn't really help that he excretes slime onto the floor with every jump. Back to the drawing board. The entire cave system has such an air of mystery throughout it. I had no idea what I was going to run across. Like when I was searching for tin to make a new workbench, I ran headlong into a new biome. Again, the screen started shaking, which put me into guard mode. And then I see, in the darkness at the edge of my screen, a giant creature crawl through the dirt, digging its own huge tunnel. I'm just like, dude, I don't want to go anywhere near that. Of course, this is another one of the bosses. Time to head back into the base and make a new workbench. 
Crafting a new tier of workbench is an exciting moment in this game because that's how you craft your new workstations and items. For example, with the second workbench I was finally able to get the slingshot and the new shiny bronze armor. Now my guy looks like an ancient Roman warrior. Admittedly, there probably are a little too many crafting stations. You got anvils for armors and weapons, you got multiple tiers of workbenches with different items on each, multiple smelters, you get the idea. It'd be nice to have newer stations kind of craft all the items from the earlier stations. It's not a huge deal in all honesty, just a little annoying. But more importantly, now we're ready for Glurch. With my new armor and a handy dandy slingshot, Glurch didn't stand a chance. Now compared to the other bosses, Glurch is easy and has simple mechanics. The giant worm I mentioned a few seconds ago? Yeah, that guy was fun. I don't want to go into too many details about the bosses, but just know that they all have different mechanics and strategies that you can employ to overcome them. Sometimes you could cheese them too, but where's the fun in that? Now since this is a survival and crafting game, there's plenty of base building aspects. They take some time to unlock, you start with the walls, the floors, and doors, but eventually you get railways, electricity, painting stations, fences, rugs, and all these different ways to personalize your base. Now when I build bases in games, honestly I'm not very creative. I have a tendency just to kind of toss everything in one room and call it a day. There was even an NPC merchant that moved into one of my vacant rooms. You could sell him things like different valuables that you find from enemies, and you can purchase basic items from him as well. Now as you do different things like running around the map, fishing, digging, fighting, gardening, crafting, you'll level up all these different skills. There's a small skill tree for each skill. The effects are somewhat minimal at first and they take a significant amount of time to level up, but it's a really nice touch. I can see it being really useful in multiplayer scenarios where one person may dedicate his digital life to gardening and crafting. Some skills are much easier to level up than others. I fished a couple of times and the fishing minigame is... it's a piece of work, let me tell you that. It takes a lot of time to complete and it doesn't really give a lot of experience. Needless to say, I don't think I'll be fishing too often. But my running skill, on the other hand, I am a track star. My mining skill is also pretty high. Now these two skills, they're, you know, they could be a factor of five or even ten times higher compared to my other skills. Now I gotta state the big caveat with Core Keeper, it is early access. I'm always hesitant to recommend early access games because sometimes the developers will, uh, they'll abandon games and then people are just kind of left with a eternally unfinished game and that always sucks. Now, right now, there's probably about 10 to 12 hours of gameplay here for solo players. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to try out the multiplayer. On the Steam page, the developer, Pugstorm, great name for a dev, by the way, there's a roadmap with a list of all the different features that Pugstorm wants to add, some of which include biomes, boats, animals, emotes, all sorts of really cool things. Now, this is Pugstorm's second game, and the first game that they've made is also on Steam. It has very positive reviews as well. I have no doubt that they'll continue to improve Core Keeper over time, They've had a lot of success with Core Keeper so far, over 250,000 purchases in the first week. But hey, at the end of the day, this game is only 12 US dollars right now. It's a fantastic deal. For an overview of Core Keeper, let's look over the pros and cons as of right now, March 2022. Pros. Excellent art style and sound design. I didn't really touch on this in the video because one, I think it's kind of self-explanatory, but the art style is so amazing. And the sound design is really engrossing, especially for a 2D game. It really nails that mysterious and sometimes creepy vibe. I really like the music tracks, some of which I used as background music for this video review. Very smooth movement, UI, and combat. The boss fights are a standout. The movement and combat are really fun. Boss fights are creative and multiple strategies are available, such as ranged, melee, using bombs, or sometimes cheesing the bosses. Satisfying progression systems. The progression systems in this game are rewarding and make you want to keep playing. Multiplayer. There's multiplayer for up to eight players, so you can play with your friends. Now, I didn't get a chance to try this out personally, but from what I could tell from watching people on Twitch and watching other YouTube videos on the game, it seems to work all right, so I'm going to include this on the pros list. Cons. There are a lot of crafting stations. Sometimes there were so many crafting stations that I forgot which one I needed. It's a bit cumbersome to include all the crafting stations in your base, and I was frequently confusing what items uh, were made by which crafting station, so I didn't really know where to, where to go to get certain items. Some skills, like fishing, are very hard to level up and can be a little too grindy and monotonous. I think there's a little bit of balancing that needs to happen with the skill experience. It needs minor optimization. 
After some time, I would have frame drops that were fixed on a restart. I think there might be a memory leak. This isn't too big of a deal because it could probably be fixed in a patch. Regardless, there needs to be some minor optimizations made. I hope you guys enjoyed this video review. I don't really do sponsorships or anything and I wasn't paid for this review. I write all of my reviews and I edit all of my videos myself. If you enjoyed this, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the bell icon, leaving a comment below, hitting the thumbs up button, or sharing with your friends. The engagement really helps. Thanks for watching everyone and have a great rest of your day. Peace.